Hello, and welcome to the show. I'm David Dickinson, the Jew, and this, this is the real deal, where we help people sell their antiques for the very best price. 100 pounds. He'll bankrupt me. <laughs> we have some cheeky and some very canny sellers. I'd go 320. That's just above scrapping it. Bit of that. That's what we want, a leg. I'm definitely going to say no. A lot more, a little bit. Carry on. <laughs> Today, the show comes to you from Prestatyn in North Wales. There's a great crowd of people. Everybody wants the real deal. Let's start on Tony Gearing's table, where there's a very impressive figure. No, not you, Tony. Why do you want to sell it, Pauline? My husband gave it to me as a present, thinking I'd like it. I never have, so I'll be happy today with £60. You're all going to be surprised what it's worth. Let's hope it's a nice surprise. And what have you brought in for me today? A jade carving. I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, it was given as a present. I've never really liked it, so... Oh. <laughs> I'm just hoping for the best, really. So, the person who gave it to you as a present? My husband. Your husband? Yeah. Did he think you might like he it? He thought I'd love it. Oh, well, that's the thought that counts, It is, it? It yeah. Is. Um, jade? Not jade. I thought it was jade. Absolutely made to look like jade, but it's soapstone. And it's very easy to carve soapstone, very soft. And it cuts like butter when they're carving it. They'll carve this in about... Half an hour. So where did your husband buy it? Uh, he did a job for somebody, maintenance work, and got paid. But then they asked him, did he want to pick something? So he chose that. OK, so they had it in their house? Yeah. Oh, OK, right. Yeah. Well, I think this is um, quite a late piece. Around about the 1960s, 70s. But they're made for export, so they're tourist pieces. Right. So actually, you go to China and you'd, you'd buy these in the market. So it's quite a stall full of it. And uh, these little chubby Chinese boys playing with the lotus flower and the lotus pods, the seeds, yeah, yeah. which uh, we know the lotus is the symbol of longevity, yeah, okay. long life. I mean, weighs a ton. Well, there's certainly no maker's mark. A few little nibbles there. I notice on the end of the lotus pod, we've had a little break off here at some point, but, you know, luckily it's been glued back. Is that something you did? Yeah. You did, so you've at least you glued it back. That's tail in the car door. Oh, in the car door. <laughs> Crikey, you're lucky you didn't break it anymore, wasn't it? Yeah. Just lost his little nib. Ooh. I think it's quite nice, actually, a decorative object. Well, really, I guess it comes down to how much money, me old china. <laughs> something I do know a little bit about, so please don't think I'm mean. But I'm going to go 20, 40. I think you're very mean. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen these for less. I think we better have a word with David, don't you? Yeah. Well, Pauline, it... I've just been speaking to my experts. At, at first look, you think, well, oh, there's a, a large piece of soapstone there. 50 to 80 is the estimation. Will it make more at auction? I think it'll make more than 40, but not a great deal more. 40, no risk or gamble. Go to auction, you might wind up with 10 or 15 pounds more on a good day. On a good day. So the choice is yours, my dear. What would you like to do? Can't stretch you to another tenner. Definitely. Sorry. I'll go to auction then. I wish you luck. I think you're going to come away with a bit more. Thank Let's hope so. You. Thank you. I thought the £40 was a little bit mean. I haven't ever seen one before. You never know. I mean, it's an impressive piece. And if someone likes it, it'll make a lot more. Let's hope so. What does today's auctioneer Simon Bauer think? I love the soapstone carving. The dealer's offer on the day was £40. And because of the interest we've had pre-sale, I think we could double it or perhaps even more. How long have you had it now? Uh, probably about seven years. OK, so you saw that Dickinson's real deal was in the air and you thought, aye, aye, here's a chance to get rid of that old bit of tap that he brought home. I certainly did. Right, OK. <laughs> 
the reserve has been set at £50. How confident are you? I'm very confident. I like that. And I have to tell you, I'm very confident too. What are you hoping to spend the money on? Probably the grandchildren. We're going to London in four weeks, so okay. that'd be nice. Is it going to sell? Well, I'm confident. I think we're on a winner here. It's coming up over there. Lovely piece of carved soapstone, big lump of it, and we can start at uh, £50. Straight in at 50 at the reserve. That's a good start. 50 bid, 55. 60 with me at 60 bid. 65 at 65. 70 on commission. At 70. 70 on commission. 75. 80, creeping up there. Nice. That bit of old touch's not so bad now, is it? No. £90 <laughs> pounds I'm bid at 90 bid at 90 bid. Well, it's here to be sold at 90. Perhaps your husband was right all along. Hold on, then. Hammers up at £90 pounds sold away. £90 pounds under the gavel. We have to take away the commission. That is £73 pounds left. First of all, are you pleased? I'm, I am pleased, yes, very. Is it more than you thought it was going to make? Yeah, I was, yeah, a little bit apprehensive, but, yeah, very pleased. OK, I'm sure the grandchildren are going to be happy. A trip down to London, real deal, was here in the sale room at £73. Pounds. I'm absolutely delighted, and I don't have to take home that ugly-looking carving. Thank goodness I didn't take your offer, Tony. Yeah, I think that offer might have been a bit low, in hindsight. Too late now, Tony. Back in the den, Sean and daughter Phoebe have brought in a copper jug. Is it made to measure for you, Stuart? Good size, good markings. This one has got a magic label, and I have a customer for it. We wanted to get about £50 for it. Um, what are you going to spend the money on, Phoebe? Toys. Right. I know what it is. Do you know what it is? No, not really. Just a jug. Just a jug, yeah. yeah. Quite an important jug in its day. This was a, a measure for measuring ale, which is, we would call it beer today. Yeah. And this is a, a government stamp to prove that this is a pint of ale in there so that the person serving the ale would have proof to say, right, this is the correct amount. So this is very much Georgian Victorian, which is late 18th, early 19th century, but they did run on until maybe 1900, 1920s. What's exciting about this for me is that it's got Lipton's Limited, I think it says. Yeah. yeah. Which is strange because, is Lipton's mean anything to you? No. Lipton's tea? No? Oh, yeah. Fair to yeah. that, yeah. They're still going, maybe? Yeah. So, why's a tea shop got an ale measure? That's question one. I've never seen that before. And this is the most exciting thing for me, because that's the maker's label, and it's Lumley & Co. in London. And I actually have customers of that family that I sell things to. They may have this already, they may not. And it's genuine. There's lots of reproductions, lots of copies about for these. But this is a real one. Good features. Handle, some lovely underneath, super colour, lots going for it. Generally speaking, they're not highly collectible anymore. They seem to have gone out of fashion a bit, but it's interesting that that's one of the smaller ones. They would actually go up to five gallon size. I've told you what I know about it. Yeah. Can you tell me how you come by it, really, and why you bought it here today? My dad used to have an antique shop. Did he? Yeah, and he used to do house clearances, so we think that's where he got it from. Right. Um, he's gone on holiday today, so he couldn't come. So he doesn't know it's here? Yeah, mean? he gave it us this morning, but he's gone on holiday and now. Has he got the rest of the set, perhaps, or is um, it just the one? Just that one, I think. OK, shall I get some money out? Are you sure you want to sell this? Let's see what we can do. Uh, what would you like? Would you like one of those? One of those. One of those. Or one of those. What would you like? What would you think he would be happy with? What did your mum say? Don't know. 60. Oh, no! 60! I'll ignore your mum. Let's talk <laughs> on carrying on this side. Just you and I talk about this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the mermaids. She went to mermaid lessons. Mermaid lessons, so you can swim? Yeah. You get to wear mermaid tails and swim in them. Sounds quite fun, actually. All these things I'm learning, you see. <laughs> You're here to learn, I'm learning instead. What are we going to do about this, though? And where's the money going, dear granddad? 
That's to you. She thinks oh. it's going to her, yeah. What are you going to do with it, then? I really fit. Are toys. you going to spend it on toys? Buy a mermaid tail. Yay! Oh, how much is a mermaid tail? I don't know. About 50 pounds. Is it? <laughs> i tell you what. I first thought I'd give you £100, so £50 you got for it. And I'll tell you what. Have a mermaid tail as well. That's for mermaid tail and that's for granddad. Wow. Is that all right? What do you say? Thank you. OK. Oh, Stuart, what a lovely gesture. It was really kind of Stuart to give Phoebe money for a mermaid tail. Um, hope he finds a nice customer for the copper pot. I'm really excited that I got fifty pounds, and I thought Stuart was nice. Lovely deal. Uh, I'm well happy, and they've gone away very happy. Let's hope you can sell it too. Coming up, controversy in Mr. Hayden's corner. Two twenty million. I don't think you're anywhere near scrap. I'm going to prove the independent values were far wrong. And Corrie's out on a limb. Bit of that. That's what we want, a leg. Get some more money down. <laughs> <laughs> He'll bankrupt me. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Next up, a collection of silver, but it's one piece in particular that's caught David Hakeney's eye. This freedom box has got a very important person, the Speaker of the House of Commons, with lots of letters behind his name. I don't normally do politics, but I'm really going to try and buy this. I bought it from a friend last year for £250. I'm open to sell it today for £400. Well, look at this. You've brought a nice collection of silver here. Yeah, very nice. Tell me something about it. Is it something you've collected? I bought it last year. Oh, of did you? A lady that I know. I do buy a bit of silver. Right. And she took it to the jeweler's shop. Yeah. He offered her the price. He wasn't quite happy, and she approached me. Right. And I upped the ante a little bit. Give her a bit more for it, Give yeah. Give her a bit more. And that Good. was last year sometime. So all these items belong to this one man that's on the front of here? Selwyn Brook Lloyd. Selwyn Brook Lloyd. MP. MP. Speaker of the House of Commons, it says on here. Very important man, wasn't he? Yeah. There's also this, the scarf, which I believe is a Cambridge scarf, his scarf. Well, they're all very nice pieces. Yeah. We've got a typical little christening present here, an egg cup and spoon matching. It's important that they match the hallmarks and they do have checked on them there. And it's got the anchor for Birmingham and the A letter for 1925. No dints. And then we've got a very nice porringer here with its original spoon. And this has got a good maker on it, Walker and Hall, WH. Very well known. And this was also a christening gift for eating stew or soup. It's nice to be complete in its box. And uh, there's another typical little christening mug here, engraved 1927. She wants a little bit of a clean, doesn't it? And it wants a bit of a clean. Never mind, you haven't done that. You could have done that for me, Billy. <laughs> This is the piece I like most. This is a Freedom of the City casket. It should have had yeah. a scroll inside, which yeah. is not there anymore. No, there was no scroll. No. Pity. And uh, what's this crest on the top? I believe it should be an Ellesmere horse crest. I think that would uh, ring right here, because uh, this casket containing the scroll conferring the honourable freedom of the borough of Ellesmere Porsk, the Right Honourable John Selwyn Brook Lloyd. And I uh, can't believe how many letters he's got behind his name here. Speaker of the House of Commons, 22nd of September, 1972. Yeah. Well, it's very, very nice. It's a shame the scroll's missing, because that would really add to its value. It's a lovely every A very box. nice piece of silver. You've got the lion for silver, leopard's head for London, and the year letter, 1972. So uh, it's a very interesting collection. Interesting subject. I wonder if I can give you a profit on it, Billy. Well, have a go, yeah. OK, I'll get the, the dosh out, shall I? <laughs> I'll be nice. <laughs> so, I don't think that's going to buy it, Billy, is it? No. No. 50 or 100? 150 pounds, Billy. No. That's a no. No, please. Well, I'm going to offer you 200 pounds for it, Billy. A little bit off. Does it show your profit? 
220 milli. No. Definite that. I don't think you're anywhere near scrap. 250 pounds. I must be warming up now. It's... I mean, I buy these sort of things quite often, you know, these yeah. little christening mugs. But this is the main one. But it's lost its scroll, which doesn't And you make got a, a scarf. Difference. Oh, the scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about the scarf. I'm going to give 300 quid, and I think that's where I'd want to be there, Billy. No more. I think 300 pounds is a fair bid, but uh, here's some advice. When I saw the 300 pounds on the table, Billy, I rushed across to my independent value because I thought, well, 300 pounds doesn't seem a lot of money. The estimate was 200 to 250, which sounds pretty low. Yeah. And I thought, looking at that box, that looks the kind of money that it should be, just the box alone. But there's a scroll missing out of there. Still a very nice a box. On the day, I think Dandy Dave, he's come in with the money, I think, at that kind of price. It's about right. <laughs> well, Billy, I'm going to try and just help you a little bit more here. I'd go 320, and I think I'd want to get 350 for it myself. That's just above scrap, isn't it? Well, you weighed it. As scrap, it comes to slightly less than well, 300 pounds. 330, Billy, and there we are. That's no. my loss. No, I'll go to auction. You're going to auction? Yeah. I'm disappointed. I really wanted to buy these. But good luck at the auction. Thanks very much. Good luck. Has Billy made the right decision? My independent valuers assure me they're not worth much more than £250, but are they right? I'm going on to auction. I'm going to prove the independent values were far wrong. I'm going to get what I really wanted. Tough talking from Billy, but he couldn't make it to the auction, so the Duke's fighting his corner. Should he have taken the £330? I think that was tempting. No deduction of commission. He said, no, I'm going to gamble. I think it will do better. I'm not so sure he's right. £200 is the reserve, which is fairly low. Was it the right decision? Let's find out. It is coming up now. A really attractive lot, political connections, and we can start straight in at uh, £120. I've Starting low, 120 With me now. At £130, I'm bid for a lovely group lot of silver at 130 140 I'm bid, 150 Still uh, slow. I'm bid at 150 160 170 180. Got to do a lot better than this. 200 At £200, I'm bid. I'll take a 20 now, then, at £200. The reserve is set at £200. All done, then. Well, it's on the market. £200 and sold away, then, at £200. OK. The gavel has gone down at £200, which was his reserve. We have to take some commission off. I make that £164 we're sending off to Billy. Now, on the dealer's day, he turned down £330 cash. That was the wrong decision. The real deal was with David Hakeney. Good offer, Dave. It certainly was. Back in the den, the something dishy on offer for Corrie Jeffrey. It's a piece of pretty shiny girly glass, so let's see if I can buy it. How much are you looking for, Cyril? £20, for which I'll buy a nice leg of lamb for a weekend. Sounds like a bargain. So you've got a lovely glass bowl yeah. in this iridescent colour on a stand. Now, yeah. what would you use this bowl for? I've never used it personally, but I would imagine it would be used for sweets or even fruit. And when did you come by it? Uh, it belonged to my mother-in-law, who's now deceased. She was married in 1925, and I assume that that was a wedding present. Well, that would be perfect to date, then, 1925. Oh, I would say about 1925. Yeah. I've decided to sell it since it, I don't use it. It's been in the cupboard. The top here is an iridescent glass. It's moulded. It's got an underlying amber colour. But when you move it in the light, it's little rainbows. Yeah. And that's a luster. So it's a lustered glass, moulded. And this type of lustered glass is called carnival glass because you won it in a fairground or at a carnival. So it was quite a cheap and cheerful kind of glass. Yes. And then they've married it with this quality base. 
is very typical of the 1920s, 30s period. You've got a dancing lady, very art deco, and it's chrome. It's chromed onto base metal. Unfortunately, the chrome has perished, so it's quite yeah. pitted. Yeah. So that does make a difference to the value. Have you any idea what you want to do with the money? Probably buy a nice leg of lamb for a weekend. Good idea. I'm going to put some money on the table. OK. I'm going to put down five. I'm going to put down ten pounds. I was looking for a little bit more. That's what it all says, isn't it? A it's too bit what everybody says. <laughs> These are not easy to sell, and that is going to be my offer, I'm afraid, ten pounds. That's it. That is it. No chance of another five. I was looking for 20, really, but... Well... Uh, 20 of a deal. Well, I'm going to... I'll put down the other five. You've got 15 on the table now, and you're not happy, are you? Uh, no, I was looking for 20. Now, I believe you want to buy a leg of lamb. That's right. And, um, Mini here has only put 15 quid down, and you need 20. Is that I do. Correct? Carnival glass. Art Deco, 1920s, it's a winner. 20 to 30 is the estimation. Got to be worth that. Certainly worth a leg of lamb at 20. Get some more money down. I'm offering him the price of a shoulder. Bit of that. That's what we want, a leg. Come on, girl. Personally, I think it's worth 25. Look at the Art, <gasps> the art Deco. Stop now before... <laughs> <laughs> He'll bankrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't go too heavy. <laughs> 20 quid, I'll be happy, and you'll get a All leg right. of lamb. That's what we want. We'll take away the five, and we put down the ten. Fine. 20 on the table. It's a deal. We have a deal. Thank you very much, deal. Cyril. Sunday lunch at yours then, Cyril. I've done the deal. I've got 20 pounds uh, for my dish. I paid double what I wanted to. David's going to have to shoulder the blame for that one. At least it didn't cost you an arm and a leg. Still to come, our sellers are pushing hard. 60 pounds. Oh, look at the face. A little bit more. It would be very nice for somebody that's got a, a dog. <laughs> and our dealers could be in trouble. Some you win, some you lose. I might be in the doghouse when I get home. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Prestart in North Wales. Wynn is hoping to light up Stuart Hofgartner's day. A Chinese cloisonne lamp. What do I want to pay for it? 50, 60 pounds? I hope I can buy it for that. I'm hoping to get 50 to 70 pounds. I'm glad I'm in front of Stuart. I've always wanted to meet him. He seems a fairly decent sort of dealer. <laughs> oh, you've got a fan, Stuart. A vase, a lamp. I think it's a, a vase been converted into a lamp. Yes, but maybe you can tell me more about it. What, what do you know about it? I can't tell you a lot because I'm selling it on behalf of a cousin of mine. She's downsizing and I quite like it. Do you know what it's made of and, and much about it? Cloisonne. Cloisonne, yeah, that's Cloisonne, correct. Yeah. And it's a Chinese origin. It's actually a brass vase, right. and then they trace brass wire into patterns, very cleverly done, Yeah. and then they fill with enamel. So right. it's enameled and fired, mm. and when you look closely at it, you can see lots of little brass-coloured lines, and that's the wire that's been applied to it. So quite intricate, Gosh. quite intricate. And let's say there's ten colours, it means it goes, it's fired ten times. Wow. This is... 50s, 60s, so it's quite late oh, in the right. antique world. Right. So 1950s, that's not 1850s. Mm. Um, it's quite nice quality, don't get me it wrong. It is nice, yes. There is a bit of damage on it, nothing major, mm. so not something that would put people off the aesthetic of it. No. But when you've got cloisonne, um, it does dent quite easy. Mm. Quite a presentable looking lamp, adjustable for the shade. Yes. But it was given to you to sell it. Yes. I'll be cheeky and get my money out then, all right? <laughs> yes, OK. <laughs> 20, 
40. 60 pounds. Oh, look at the face. A little bit more. Come on, Stuart. I'll, I'll make it 70 pounds. I'll do a tenner on there. Make it 70 pounds. Oh, Stuart, you oh. can do better than that. Come on. I think I was hoping to buy it for 50. 80 pounds, then. Do you have a deal at 80 pounds? Yes, we have a deal. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got more than I expected. Stuart always seemed very fair on the television, and I wasn't disappointed. I said 60, I paid 80. Some you win, some you lose. I've got to stop there, because I think it was quite good. Come again? <laughs> I think of the next bit, cos her name is Wynne, you see. Oh, Stuart, it's the way you tell them. Everybody and his dog has come to the den today, and oh. Bill is no exception. I bought this dog from a charity shop I used to help out at for £25, and now I'm hoping to get £30 plus. What are you thinking, Mr Hakeney? Well, I would be barking mad if I gave more than 50 quid for this one. Let's see, shall we? Lovely colour, isn't it? It is. It's uh, very rich. Very rich. Very That's rich. Right. Nice it, patination. It, it... Yes. 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 Well, people have stroked it for many years. Now, looking at this, you'd think this was made of bronze, wouldn't you? I thought it was, actually, If you pick it up, time. you think it was made of bronze. <laughs> it's heavy, isn't it? But huh? I see that we've got some white metal here, mm -hmm. which tells me this is not bronze. It is some kind of a, an alloy or something like that with a bronze finish. Yes. And we've got some initials here, JB, I don't know, that must be the designer, I would think. And we've got some numbers here, 734. That's all it says underneath, so mm -hmm. it's a bit of a guessing job. Well, it's uh, for somebody to be very nice, for somebody that's got a, a dog, that likes dogs, has got a great Dane. You're absolutely right, Wouldn't Bill. Have you got a great Dane? I haven't, no. I used to have a cross mm. uh, between an Alsatian and a Labrador. But she was too much, so I gave it to somebody else who... You bought him instead? Got her <laughs> instead. Ah, <laughs> yeah. How and long they... have you had this then, Bill? Probably quite a few years now, mm. actually. I would guess it was made in the it 20s or I... 30s, mm. I would have thought. Look I've not had it that long myself, but I worked mm. in a charity shop, and that's where I bought it. And now I'm trying to unload because I'm a hoarder. That's why I bought it. Bill. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 What are you going to spend the money on? I've got brand new great grandchildren in Australia, Melbourne, Marvelous. who I've never seen, only on uh, photographs. And so I'd love to put all proceeds towards a nice cruise, cruise make there. a cruise of it, and be broke when I come back. What a marvellous idea. Well, no. Bill, if this had been bronze, I'd be offering you several hundred pounds, wouldn't it? Well... It's ain't going to be a few hundred quid, but I'm going to try and buy it off you. I'm going to start off with 20, and you're going to say no. I'm definitely going to say no, sir. And I'm going to say, well, 40 pounds, because I like it. It's not valuable, this, Bill. It's not valuable, no, but it's... it's nice. Somebody would have that, especially if it's got a great day. I'm going to tell you something, though. Yes, sir. Not a lot of people have got a great day. I've seen one or two They're walking quite rare. around Prestatin. <laughs> Bill, 50 quid, look, and that's what I want to give for it. Here's some advice. Well, we've done a little bit of searching. It is a base metal uh -huh. coated in bronze, yep. anywhere between 1920 to 1940. Mm -hmm. The estimate is 30 to 40. Mm -hmm. David's put down 50 pounds. I think it's worth every penny of 50 pounds because it's got style, it's got a look, yeah. and I don't think you could do any better by going to auction. So my opinion is, sell it to Dandy Dave, and I'm sure he'll sell it for 65 or 70 quid. And that's for the kind of money it's worth retail. David, if you Bill. put another fiver on there, Do you want and me that to? will make it 55, you sell it for 65, you made a tenner. Oh, OK. How's that? Fiver. 55 yes, pounds. Yes, sir. Are you happy? Yes, I think so now, David. Thank Got you very much. Thank yes. you. Now, tell me how much you gave for him. I gave... £25 at the charity shop where I used to work. Well, I'll be lucky if I get £25, oh, I assure you. I hope you get more, a lot more. I think you should. £30 profit. Beat that if you can, David. 
And David, you said you'd be barking mad to pay more than 50. Five or more. I might be in the doghouse when I get home. After the break, another superb bargain buy. I bought two cool pottery vases in a jumbo sale for £10. But how much can Ada squeeze out of Tony? 100. No, a little bit more. A little bit, bit more. A bit more. Carry on, bit. carry on. <laughs> Find out in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Next up, some smoking silver for Stuart. Is it yours, Dawn? This was left to my husband through his uncle. Just hoping as much as I can get, really. It's silver, it's Chinese, it's got dragons on it, it's got to be good, but I'll box clever and not bid too high for it. A silver box? Yes. Mm. Can you tell me what you know about it and, and how you've acquired it, please? It was left to my husband in a will, and his uncle, it belonged to his mother, who was, who was from China. Was she? Uh, yes. She actually moved back here uh, to Wales. I don't know much more, really. And there's a few little markings on the bottom. Yes, uh, like we would have hallmarks here. Yeah. There are some marks underneath, and they just tell you the maker and so on. It doesn't actually give you a, a date, but this is silver. Different grey to English silver, but silver nevertheless. And I think it's a cigarette box, because although it looks as though it would take king size that way, it was designed to take smaller ones that way. Right. But I think it would make a very good bridge card box for two packs of cards. Yeah. Good embossed detail, and then laid on and mounted around the wooden carcass. Right. What's extra interesting about it, and you must have noticed the cartouche here with the monogram on. Yeah. Does that relate to the family at all? I've got no idea. This is very European, these monograms. Right. and not Chinese, they are English. Right. I wouldn't mind betting this was given as a wedding present initially, but they're very popular with the people that were out in Asia and in the East uh, later than the Second World War. A lot of things came back from the troops serving over there yeah. in the 50s. Yeah. Would this tie in with that? Or? Well, my uncle would have been in his late 80s now, and it belonged to his mother, yeah, so it might be even a bit earlier than that. I think yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Why do you want to sell it, can I ask? We've only got a small family and I've lost my father and we've emptied houses. Right. So we can't keep everything. No, no, and you've got yeah. a lot of other things, presumably, that yes. remind you of him. Yeah. OK, a few little dents on it. They won't be easy to get out, as you can appreciate from... Yeah. But, but overall, a nice-looking box. Yeah. I'll have a go at buying it. OK. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. No, thank you. No, no, no. thank you. Very, very firm. <laughs> Hundred pounds. Uh, oh. That's my price, I'm afraid. A hundred pounds on the table. That's my bid. Okay. I think I'd better go to auction then. To auction? Okay. Thank you. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Rather surprised you it didn't go for my silver box. I thought £100 was enough and it should have bought it, but uh, let's see who's right. We certainly will. And according to our auctioneer Simon, it won't be you, Stuart. They've had a lot of pre-sale interest. I'm very, very pleased. £100 offered on the dealer's day. I think we should double that. Fingers crossed. I hope there's a lot of silver buyers in the room or maybe the internet and I get a good price for my silver box. Now, you've heard me say this many times before. The marketplace in China has opened up tremendously. Many, many Chinese people are, are interested in items that were produced in China so I think this has got a chance. If it was a normal English silver box, I'd say, not so interesting, smoking apparel, not so good. But because it's Chinese silver, I think it makes it more important. What are you hoping to do with the money that comes from the sale? It's for the holiday fund. Holiday fund? Well, yeah. Yeah. I've got a feeling this is going to go very nicely into the holiday fund. Let's see just how okay. well it's going to do. There we are, this beautiful Chinese silver cigarette box. Typical Chinese dragon decoration, beautiful piece. And we can start, ladies and gentlemen, at £90. 
And internet's taken it straight up to 150, so there we are. Who's on the internet? Is it from China? Is it from this country? 180 with me. At 180 bid, 190, 200. 200 pounds? 220, 240. Very good. In the room at 240, on commission, out online at 240 pounds. At 240 pounds, I'm bid. At 240. All done then, hammers up at 240 pounds. All done at 240. Okay, 240 pounds is the gross price. We have to take away the commission. I make that 196 pounds. Happy with the result? Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm happy with it too. You turned down the 100 quid, you did the right thing, and you're taking home. £196 towards a holiday, and that was the real deal. Quite a bit more than Stuart offered me. I'm over the moon. Glad your gamble paid off, Dawn. Hello, I'm... Fred. Let's head over to Tony's table, where Ada's going to let us in on a secret. I brought along today two pool pottery vases, what I bought in a jumble sale for £10. I know Tony can drive a hard bargain, but I'm hoping to get £180 for them. Lovely, lovely and colourful. I really quite like them, actually. Well, crack on and buy them, then. What can you tell me about them? I was in the Alawite and I bought them. I saw them in the shop and I bought them from the Alawite. Wow. Yeah, on that... holiday. I was on holiday. How long ago was that? In the 80s, 1980s. In the 80s? Yes. Wow. Well, I mean, it's unusual to find a pair. Yes, yeah. yes. And the birds, I think, are, are quite Yeah, the blue, blue well. bird pattern, isn't it? Blue bird pattern, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, this pattern, do you know when this pattern was...? No, I, I know they stopped making it in 32. 1932, yes. so absolutely pre-32. I did phone pool pottery when I bought them, and they asked me had I got them insured. And I said, just on the household insurance, and they said I should insure them separately. Really? I did have them on display, but uh, they just got in a cupboard and that's it. So why did you stop displaying them? I don't know. It's just that you change your decor, don't you? You change your right. furniture and... Didn't sort of fit in. No. You went a bit more no. modern, didn't you? Yeah, that's You've right. You've gone a bit modern. <laughs> that's right. Well, as you say, pool pops, bluebird design. Mm. We can see they're all handmade. Yes. Hand-painted. Yes. And pool are famous for this soft colouring, this soft yeah. palette. Yes. We can turn them over here and we can see the square pool stamp yeah. from the 1930s. And we've got the painter's initials there. And that'll be the shape number yeah. or the design number. So we've got these lovely mottled greens and purples and reds and yellows and, of course, blues. Mm. Um, give them a little ping, make sure they're not cracked. They sound perfect. Um, but I think these are seconds. Honestly. Looking at these, you can see that the paint on the bluebirds hasn't really gone well in the firing. No. I think these would have been much brighter. Right, I guess we come down to some money. That's okay. why you're here, isn't it? It is. What are you going to do with the money, depending on what you get? Um, I think just a long weekend away somewhere. Right, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 150. No, a little bit more. A little bit, bit more. more. A bit more. Carry a little on. bit. Carry on. <laughs> All right, let's take him away, shall we? OK, then. What's that, 160? Yes. 180, so that's 30 more. Yeah. Um, is David available? David's always David? available. Let's bring the Duke in. <laughs> you know, Adra, I looked across at these and I thought, nice pair of pots, those. Mm, thank you. They say a few years ago they'd have been 400 quid, yeah. 450 oh, without on. any problem. I know. The estimate's 150, 180. Mm. And Tony's got 180 on the table. That's where I'm at. And he's okay. right on the money. And they look well worth the 180, but yeah. I don't think I would dare push you to the auction. No because we might come unstuck in the auction. Mm. And I think Tony's been fair already. No commission, 180 cash, that's the price. Oh, thanks, David. <laughs> what do you say then, Ada? 180, is that a long enough weekend? That's lovely, thank you very much. Ada, thank, thank you for bringing them, it's been a pleasure. Thank lovely. you. So, how much did you pay for them? 10 pounds. 10 quid! 
That's the real deal. It certainly is. So, can any of our dealers do better than Ada? Tony tried to bag a bargain with the Chinese carving. 40. I think you're very mean. <laughs> I got to auction them. And he still hasn't sold those vases. They might have bluebirds on them, but they still haven't flown away. So, no profit for you, and Cora hasn't done any better. David pushed her to pay more for the carnival glass. Certainly worth a leg of lamb at 20. Get some more money down. But while Cyril has enjoyed his Sunday roast, Corrie's out of pocket. Bah! I got slaughtered on that one. From lambs to dogs, and Mr Hateney got collared. I would be barking mad if I gave more than 50 quid for this one. Phil, are you happy with 55 pounds? Yes, I think so now, David. Thank you, you very much. I might be in the doghouse when I get home. But he's still got his paws on a profit. That's only a tenner between the three of you. So, can Stuart save the day for the dealers? Sure. It looked like he was being generous with the copper jug. That's for Mermaid Tower and that's for Grandad. But he knew he could afford it. This one has got a magic label and I have a customer for it. And even though he lit up Wednesday... £80, do you have a deal? £80? Yes, we have a deal. OK. There was still a glimmer of a profit. Well done, Stuart. But none of our dealers could beat Ada and her vases. I spent £10 and made 180 That's the real deal. And that's what the show is all about. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, the Duke, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. I'll see you.